making YouTube dead? If it is, I could be an accomplice of sorts. It's been hard to make things in this niche for a multitude of reasons, but the reality is that the past two years has been redirected to our feature documentary, more family time, and my new obsession with distance running. Did I lose my zeal for it in that time? Did everyone lose their zeal for it in that time? Let's explore it a bit. An anecdotal assessment of the realities of filmmaking YouTube. 20 okay, quick disclaimer. I'm re-watching this video and it looks like I'm so mad, but I'm not at all. <laughs> I, don't know. I think in the middle of a marathon training block, I'm just so exhausted that sometimes I think I'm being happy or looking happy. <laughs> I just, so I'm sorry, if I, especially at the tone of this video with like filmmaking being dead. I promise you I'm not upset. This is how cheery I normally am. So just use this as kind of the tone as you watch kind of the deadness in my eyes. 2017 to 2019 was the tutorial era where many DSLR gripping guerrilla style filmmakers took to YouTube with tips and tricks and editing styles that a lot of people adopted, copied, and made their own. This was a deeply transformative time for all of us and inspired us to take that photo video hybrid camera on every trip we went on and felt like it could be the ticket to becoming a filmmaker. 2020 to 2022 was the reckoning. How many ways can you film something inside? Turns out, not a lot. <laughs> so many filmmaking YouTubers turn to gear reviews and a sort of do it at home digital approach to keep their YouTube careers afloat. 2023 to now seems to be undecided. It's kind of all over the place. Obviously the gear review stuff still exists, but it needs to be done with unprecedented detail, a perfect embargo time with an expeditiously savvy approach. And even then, is that filmmaking or is it just all of us filmmakers watching something and being entertained while not making anything of substance with that gear? Views are down across the board. Subscriber count doesn't seem to matter much anymore. And it feels that everyone is kind of tired of the repetitive nature of the first two eras of tutorials and gear. Speaking out of experience, if any video had some level of quality information or interesting gear, it would do fairly well. But since so many filmmakers are showing up to the platform and trying to replicate the things that happened in the first two eras, those videos are falling flat and the audience seems to be immune to the redundancy. Let's look at some YouTube filmmakers who are seeing success on the platform as a case study for what's working now and why. Carlos Digliano, commercial cinematographer and director of photography, taking us along his experiences on set with robust, mostly uncut BTS of him doing the thing. There's the difference. He's being a filmmaker without YouTube, but using the platform to provide commentary on the career outside of the platform itself. Mark Bone, documentarian and documentary educator Educator. Speaking to his rich experience in being a documentarian for over a decade, breaking down films, including tutorials on how to approach documentaries, commentary on filmmaking in general, and welcoming individuals into his educational powerhouse, AOD. Another person doing the thing outside of YouTube and using it as fuel to make content for the platform. Lewis Potts, another commercial cinematographer and director of photography, doing very similar things to Carlo, but welcoming in an audience with his witty personality and calm demeanor. He does tutorials, but in a way that feels practical on an actual set, or something he created in his home that could be closely replicated in a feature film setting someone doing things. I'm not saying I'm any of these three people. I feel like I'm very different actually because I don't do a whole lot of filmmaking outside of YouTube anymore. So who do I relate to? Someone I deeply resonate with on this platform is my friend Danny Gewertz. Danny has stayed consistent on this platform in this niche by providing a combination of all the tactics of the individuals listed before, but a lot of his work stems from his own ideas, spec ads, and his own creations. Now, I don't feel like I'm really in tune with the filmmaking niche on YouTube as much as I used to be because I watch a lot of running YouTube now, but I feel like I can safely say that Danny is the person that is nailing this thing, doing stuff within the platform and not necessarily speaking to the work he does outside and commentary on that work. Outside of his feature film, I think I'm sick. 
which I can also relate to because we made our own feature film, our own feature documentary, Moving Still, the past two years as well. And we are going to be including commentary on that effort and that pursuit. And yeah, sure, I'll definitely provide commentary on my commercial filmmaking and any narrative stuff I do outside of YouTube, but I really need to figure out what that looks like for me in the coming year. I built this YouTube channel on wedding filmmaking and wedding photography, and the act of doing that and doing it outside of YouTube and the commentary on it seemed to resonate with the audience because they were looking to do the same. But as I kind of step away from that work at volume, I'm now tasked and given the opportunity to make compelling short films or BTS or spec ads, similar to the way Danny approaches his work and constantly looking at him for a lot of inspiration in that. But now that our feature doc moving still is completely edited and done, I'm moving into that next season. As I venture into this new frontier this year, my new editor and filmmaking assistant, Cyrus, is going to be helping me with making these spec ads and short films and BTSs with Musicbed. So that's gonna be a partner throughout this year. Outside of them being involved in virtually every single video I make on YouTube, it's been a constant source of inspiration. Their library is always something that I go to when I wanna pull emotion into my filmmaking. Musicbed is far and away the highest quality source of music for any filmmaking needs. We used it for 22 songs across our feature documentary. We couldn't imagine not having Musicbed in its library as a resource in editing Moving Still. Steven and I feel like we would have been entirely lost without being able to thread that kind of music within the plot as we edited it. With over 50,000 songs available on their platform, we didn't have to spend a ton of time digging for the right song. Rather, we found multiple that worked for one scene. Whether you're trying to start as a filmmaker on YouTube, going into weddings, trying commercial work, doing narrative stuff, whatever the case is, Musicbed will be your favorite resource in the process of making meaningful motion pictures however they manifest. Switch to Musicbed and experience what you can only find with their exclusive collection of music. You can sign up for a free 14-day trial. It's just linked below, first link in the description. Thank you to Musicbed for supporting my ever-evolving career. Now, when it comes to this new era of filmmaking YouTube, might I propose that it is one of creation? May I tantalize the idea of pushing us to make the things we've wanted to make? All of those years of studying the medium, understanding the tools, and practicing techniques for what? to continue to study the same medium and understand the small nuances of the new tools, practicing the techniques we've already practiced but creating videos with no substance. Now, while those rhetorical questions might be a conclusion of some sort, I recognize the irony of this video, me not making anything really original, but kind of just talking about the things that are happening in the space. But the reality is this is a jumping off point for myself and I will be making original things moving forward and I'm really excited about that. So I hope you get excited about that too. I don't believe filmmaking YouTube is dead, but I do think it's dormant in some sense and to wake it from its dormancy, I'm going to need to challenge myself with my own proposition. What skills will I use to make something of substance? How will I use my voice to create films that mean something to individuals and move them to certain emotions or motivations in their life and art? I'm thrilled to step into this new era and I hope that you join me in it. Let's revive it again.